Hey everybody, it's Jeff Antoniak. Welcome to Digging Deeper Jazz Video. So good to have you here. Uh, today, very, very interesting video. Uh, for those of you that have tuned into Digging Deeper before, welcome back. You know what we like to do here is find a fantastically simple distilled practice idea to get you going better. Now, this is not saxophone stuff. I happen to be playing saxophone. This is for all instruments. And this, uh, this video today, particularly, for all instruments. Now I'm talking about voice or bass or other horns. What I want to talk about today is a fantastically simple, very clear approach to practicing that can really achieve eight or nine or ten different things for you. I'd love for you to focus on one or two of those ten, but this is really a magic bullet kind of exercise. And I've been using it for years and just in the last week or two, got a student, a semi-pro adult student, like so many of you out there, adult amateurs, adult semi-pros, and this guy's been studying with me for a while. He's been playing in lots of different big bands and jazz small groups, and there was something with his tone that we were just trying to get right. It was sort of saggy, but it wasn't flat. It was, he had a great sound, but still it was lacking some focus. And this exercise solved it. So this was a fantastic way to get his tone together focusing on his tone. And by the way, not just saxophone. This is for trumpet and flute and all these other instruments. So that's what I want to dig into today. And the idea is that we need to get our instrument able to stop and start on a dime. I was talking to a fantastic vocal teacher yesterday to double check that this makes sense vocally speaking. It does. So now the idea of being able to start a note exactly in time. That sounds pretty simple, right? One, two, three, four, bang. Turns out that's freaking hard to do on these instruments. Uh, you're asking right now, what gives Jeff the authority to talk about all these instruments? Um, I don't have a badge. It's, it's upstairs in the bedroom. I, I, I could show you my jazz authority badge. Um, but I've played soprano, alto, tenor, baritone, saxophone and they're really different. So just being able to play those instruments. I played flute and alto flute and piccolo back in the day and clarinet and E flat clarinet. I play bass, I play drums, I play piano. And each of those instruments kicks my butt in our ability to play, you know, to start a note just so. Sure, on the drums, it's a percussion instrument. You hit the cymbal, it sounds in time. But hand drums, I played some African, West African hand drums. Wow, to get that percussive sound with your hand, that takes technique, right? So we need to work on the beginning of our note, we need to work on the end of the note. And when we can do that, and how do we do that with a fantastic tone, okay? How do we play a note with a firm beginning, a firm end, but with tone in the middle? That's what we were working on with this guy. So let me put this sheet up on the screen for you here. And the exercise couldn't be more simple, but it's really on you to be focusing as you do this exercise. So really, what we're gonna do here is play a scale. I don't care what scale it is, I wrote out the C major scale because I know that one really well. And um, what we wanna do is play these detached notes with a very firm beginning and end. Okay, so let me play an example for you. And there's a very good chance I am not gonna like what I play here. Let's give it a try. Okay, I didn't hate that, but I remember the first two notes, there was a, an inconsistency there. What I just did is really hard. I hope you're impressed by my saxophone prowess on the C major scale. That is freaking hard. I started playing electric bass about three years ago. And so this morning, I took out the bass and started doing this on a B flat major scale. I had to play the scale, I counted 17 times before I could play the ascending scale just right. No fret buzz, a thick, full sound, not too short, not too long. And I was actually, as I started thinking about this stuff, now I'm actually missing notes in the B-flat concert scale. Now, I'm not a professional, but I'm at a semi-pro level as a bass player. Um, it kicked my butt, okay? This is something you guys need to practice. Now, 
Let me try doing that on the lower octave of the saxophone. On many of our instruments, that differs, right? Now, playing it on the piano, it will be similar from octave to octave. The feel of the piano doesn't really change. The feel of the flute really changes from the low octave to the third octave, right? Let me give this a try. <laughs> All right, right there. Those four notes were four entirely, they were, all four of them were different. That ain't good. That's not a good thing. They were inconsistent in their length, in the thickness of the sound. I don't know if that came across on the microphone, but it was not cool. All right. <laughs> Did you hear that top note, that top C concert? it had a honk or it had some extra harmonics in it. That's the precision I'm talking about that we want to be able to do. Can you have your tone on these notes? Now, here's the thing. Um, there's, there's this magic thing that happens when we play staccato or detached like that. We have to, as, as a wind instrument, our air has to go full speed. So if you happen to be playing a wind instrument, you have to be full speed and full stop. It's really, really hard to do. So this forces you to hear what's going on with your tone. The gentleman I was talking about with his tone, we couldn't figure out what to do as he was playing legato or playing Charlie Parker transcriptions or whatever. But then when we started playing these short notes, we noticed that the note wasn't fully formed. The note had to start and stop in such a short amount of time. We noticed the note didn't quite form. They would sort of bubbled up or something like that, or there'd be miss pitches or squeaks, again, depending on the instrument. As I do this on the bass, if my finger isn't right in the right place, right in the right place with, you know, relative to the fret with the right amount of pressure, yes, including the little finger, there's a buzz or the sound takes a while to form, right? So I'm asking you to play at a really professional level, and this is the exercise. Now, when you can make your tone form immediately, the best sound you ever had, immediately, stop and start, that's a big deal, right? And so, yes, we're talking about articulation. We're talking about real mechanical and, you know, just the mechanics of the instrument, whether it's hand position on a conga or whether it's tongue position as you play the clarinet. So I'm not going to give individual lessons on all these instruments, but I want you to do this staccato exercise and do it across different ranges of your instruments and see if you can pull this off. It's hard. This is super pro level. I have grad students in the past. This would kick their butt. And here's another interesting thing. Jazz is typically very legato music, right? So a lot of us, our ability to articulate gets um, a little atrophied maybe. We don't use it so much. So it gets a little bit lost. Let me do this again. And the last note was an air ball, right? I'm a professional musician. I do this for a living. And that is so hard. If I went up or down a half step, it would be a totally different game because on the saxophone, it's a, quite an inconsistent instrument in how it responds. Holy cow, what a good thing for you to practice a little bit every day. It's going to teach you a lot about your technique and the idea of getting your tone right in time. Your tone has to show up when, you know, it, playing these scales rhythmically. It has to show up in time. That seems like an obvious thing. Yes, my tone in time. No, no, no. This is very, very difficult. So you'll see item number two on the sheet is a Charlie Parker composition called My Little Suede Shoes. So what I did is just wrote out the first eight measures, the A section of this song, and I wrote out the articulation I'd like you to use. In those eight measures you see there, there's only one long pitch, which is three measures from the end. Now this is not the way Charlie Parker played it. He played it more legato. I'm suggesting this is a great song for you to know, written by Charlie Parker, and I'm suggesting this is a cool one that would make some degree of sense in this highly articulated uh, way of playing. Again, no, this isn't the way Charlie Parker recorded it. I'm sure we could find recordings of people interpreting it this way, though. Let me play it for you. <laughs> Yep, that was me squeaking. 
you have not heard me squeak on one of these videos, I don't think. I never squeak. But I'm forcing, I'm, I'm, I'm forcing myself to do such a hard, complicated thing, playing these repeated notes. <laughs> Wow, I'm embarrassing myself in front of the whole internet here. The point is, it's hard, right? Now, if I were uh, one of the guys that's a recording studio musician, who their job is to show up seven days a week, six days a week in some recording studio and be perfect first time, that's not really my thing. I've done some of that kind of playing, but uh, it, it, it's a different aesthetic, that perfection on the instrument. So yes, I spend a lot of my time thinking, you know, as a jazz musician, as an artist, thinking about improvisation, but this ability to focus on our instrument, and this is a fantastic exercise. It's that simple. Play these short, precise notes with a firm beginning, firm end. If you're playing bass, again, how do you end the note without the string ringing? So there's, it's a lot of left-hand technique. It might involve some right-hand technique. There's a lot of ways to do this stuff. So I am challenging you to give this a try. It's that simple and see what you come up with. I think you're gonna be uh, appalled. <laughs> if not appalled, shocked. If not shocked, like, hmm, I got some work to do here. This is gonna make your presentation of everything you do great. Now here would be a weird exercise, is to now, after you play the melody of my little suede shoes, improvise now with this sort of pecking sort of rhythm. Again, you wouldn't do this on stage generally, but improvise like that. So now as your brain starts thinking more about what note do I wanna play and starts thinking less about the articulation and your tone and all the technique and everything, does it go out the window? My uh, brilliant ESP mind reading is telling me, yep, it's gonna go out the window. As you start thinking about other things, you're get, this is going to go down, 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 down in a bad way. So do a little bit of that. Do a little improvising and see if you can keep the level high. So this started out as a tone exercise. This is frankly one of the best tone exercises I know for many, many instruments. But then it works on our precision and, we, and our articulation. And yes, tone and precision and articulation start feeding into your ability to play styles and into your groove and time feel into your ability to play wide intervals, that flexibility, that firm tone that can stop and start. This is a, a, a pretty powerful exercise. So I hope you give it a try. Quirky, simple, weird little exercise, and I promise you it's powerful. So uh, check it out. And you know, this is the kind of stuff we're gonna get into at Jazzwire when it launches November 2018. You've heard me talking about this. Now here's the thing. I'm going to get a lot of emails from you folks on, well, geez, I play clarinet or I play trombone and what happens when such and such. Well, yeah, on Jazzwire, we're going to have professionals on all those instruments answering these specific questions. Each week, a couple times a week, we're going to offer you ideas like this. And then we're going to have conversations in the community at Jazzwire. So I'm so excited about that. That's going to be a blast. And as much as you folks are enjoying these videos, it's this times 10. It's going to be fantastic. So thank you. As always, if you'd like the PDF, let me know. You can write us at diggingdeeperjazz at gmail.com. Play some staccato scales and uh, let's see what happens. All right, guys, take care. Bye-bye.